traveling the world unto himself. And he has entrusted us with the message of reconciliation. Live in harmony with one another. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live peaceably with all. The Lord has shown you what is good. And what does God require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? such as those inscribed on the mace of the Scottish Parliament, wisdom, justice, compassion, integrity, and unite also in a common purpose of delivering what is good for our nation and all our people. Welcome to regular worshippers in St. Giles and to visitors from around the world, including those following the live web stream of this service. Welcome to members of government, national and local, to parliamentarians, people from the media. Welcome to representatives of Scottish churches and faith communities. Welcome one and all to this High Kirk of Edinburgh at the heart of Scotland's capital city. Last Wednesday, the Scottish novelist and playwright, Alan Bissett, contributing to Sarah Smith's nightly referendum programme, commented on the campaign in these words. History will judge how we dealt with it afterwards. And a couple of weeks ago, the Scottish crime writer, Val McDermott, concluded a partisan newspaper article with these words. Whatever happens, I hope most of all that on the 19th of September we can shake hands with our opponents and still be friends. It is in the spirit of reconciliation that we come now to seek God's blessing anew on our common life. Let us pray. Please be seated. <coughs> Our prayers draw on ecumenical resources prepared by action of churches together in Scotland. We worship you, O God. You have formed us as your people, summoning us through the costly lives of saint and martyr, through preacher, prophet, artist, and politician, through women and men of faith in every place and in every time. In the coming of the stranger, we have been refreshed with new insights and new skills honed in other cultures. In the path of the invader, we have found unity and purpose. In the face of adversity, we have learned the gift of sharing. In opening our minds to your creation, we have widened the horizons of our knowledge, finding fresh cause to glorify your name. In travel and pilgrimage, we have learned to bury prejudice. In the shame of our actions, we have come to repentance, 
and discover the new life of the forgiven. Have mercy on us, we pray, and bless us as now we come to you in a time of new shaping and fresh challenge. Help us to listen for your word for us, to feel your companionship as we travel on, crossing over to a new place and moving forward on a new terrain, familiar yet unfamiliar. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And let us say the collect now together. O God, most merciful and gracious, be pleased to remember the whole body of our people, rich and poor, high and low, young and old together, overcome the power of our national sins. Say the Lord in our power in every heart, pardoning every good work of our hands, advancing every pure influence in our midst, healing the divisions of society, Hastening the day when all shall have work to do and shall desire to do it by faith. And there shall be joy and peace and righteousness throughout our land. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. The first lesson is written in the book of Exodus, chapter 16. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of the bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening, you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came upon and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is this? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Here ends the first lesson. Thank you. 
The second lesson is written in the Gospel according to St. Matthew in chapter 20. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again, about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Here ends the second lesson.
of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat> Some of the best known words in the Bible remind us that for everything there is a season and there is a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to sow, a time to reap. Today, after such a momentous time, I want to say that this is a time to unite and a time to walk together. The untold energy of people who love Scotland and care about its future has been used on opposite sides of this debate. Now we have to harness all of that energy so that it can be used on the same side. When the late Jimmy Reed addressed the Upper Clyde shipbuilders in 1971 as they staged their sit-in, he said to them, the world is watching us and it is our responsibility to conduct ourselves with responsibility and with dignity and with maturity. Actually, he said quite a bit more than that. <laughs> but we know what he meant, and we know that his words are as poignant today as they were in 1971. The eyes of the world are on us. And the world needs to see us conduct ourselves with responsibility, with dignity, and with maturity. Post-referendum, there are those who are elated or at least relieved, and there are those who are desperately disappointed. Gutted is the word that I have heard used frequently. Feelings like these will take time to heal, and I want no one to think that I think there is a quick fix or an easy dusting down. For some, this referendum has been about national identity, and for all of us, it has at least been about self-identity. And that is about as close to the soul as it gets. So recovery and healing is a soul-searching matter. So no quick fix. Instead, it will take a force of magnanimity and graciousness to restore, equilibrium to both nation and individuals. And for me personally, that is a deeply spiritual thing, and it will be for others. But the economy of God runs on the fuel of magnanimity and grace. And so today, the church here, along with congregations across the country, is playing its part in making it a little easier to deal with those feelings and in particular to help people to stretch out a hand of friendship to those who are fellow Scots but did not support the side that we supported. How we voted on one particular day does not define who we are. How we work together to put in place what the democratic process has determined will be defining, both for us as individuals and for us as we work to redefine our place within the United Kingdom. My favorite verse in all of Scripture has already been quoted in this service in the words of introduction. It is in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, where St. Paul describes Jesus as the great exemplar of reconciliation. 
bringing us back into relationship with God. And then He reminds us that we also are entrusted with the work of being agents of reconciliation. And the way this works is through grace. Grace is that elegant, generous magnanimity which offers us a place at the table which we have not earned and which we do not deserve. And if we are to be agents of reconciliation, then we too have to be generous in the way that we include others at any of the tables which we would rather keep to ourselves. Today and in the weeks to come, Scotland needs magnanimity all round, and it needs a process for shaping our future which allows every voice, the 45% and the 55%, not just to be heard, but to be listened to. This process that we have been through has engaged those who have otherwise been disengaged. And we cannot allow that engagement to evaporate. The Bible lessons today, which I did not choose, but which are the lessons being followed by all of those churches which use the common lectionary, they are lessons about magnanimity and grace. In the Exodus story, the children of Israel have begun the journey to their promised land, and they now realize that it's not as easy a journey as some of them had wished or wanted. Some of them wished they had just stayed put. But we must not mistake this for a story of misery and grumbling for it is actually a story about a generous and giving God. It's a story about faith in God's provision, and it's a story about believing that for all our apprehension, God goes with us into the future. Indeed, it's a story about how God goes before us into the future. And it tells us that if the people played fair, and if they did justice to one another, then they would be provided for, and they were. Likewise, as we look to the future as determined by the people of Scotland, there will be time enough for fears about the journey. But most poignantly, we need to believe that if we play fair with one another and do justice to one another and listen to the voice, most particularly the voice of those who feel they are never heard, then in the providence of God, we will be provided for. The parable of the workers in the vineyard is one of those stories where most of us can see the justification for the annoyance of those who were hired early in the day. Why should we not be annoyed when someone who has done less work than we have ends up getting the same reward? The only way in which those who have put in the greater effort, the only way in which those who have suffered the heat of the day can possibly consent to this kind of economy is if they are prepared to set aside their envy and be utterly gracious and accept that this is not about the level of the reward. It is about the generosity of the owner of the vineyard. The owner dispenses grace he gives people more than they might deserve, and He calls on others to be just as gracious and understanding. 
Jesus' description of this grace and generosity actually goes as far as to say, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. And that, of course, is the extraordinary measure of God's grace and love. Today in Scotland, those who may be feeling let down, bereft, anxious, or angry, need to find that on the other side, there are those who are prepared to be magnanimous, generous, and inclusive in their approach to what happens next. And although it's not possible for the result to be reversed so that the first shall be last and the last shall be first, there is an imperative that we make the last feel like they are the first. That would be grace, perhaps as close as we can get to the grace of the owner of the vineyard. Of course, that cryptic maxim that the first shall be last and the last shall be first has nothing to do with being runner-up. Runner-up spot means you've competed and you've competed well. The last in this parable are those who hardly even get into the race. The last are women and men who can see no road out of the poverty in which they live. The last are children who endure poverty of opportunity. The last are women abused by men who exploit. The last are those marginalized by social exclusion, by illness, by advancing years. Let's make the last and the least the focus of our attention as we imagine Scotland's future. And we will have something to unite on. Around the mace that resides in our Scottish Parliament are the shared values of the Scottish people. Justice, wisdom, integrity, and compassion. Whether you saw the way to a better Scotland through the lens of yes or the lens of no, what you saw through your lens was the possibility of extending these values so that ours was a fairer, more just, more equal, and more inclusive society. I believe that these are values of the Christian faith, and light for me is shed on each one of these values through my faith. But I will join with people of all faiths and none. I will join with institutions, political parties, academics, the rich, and the poor. Anyone who shares these same values, I will work with if we are prepared to work for these values by any means possible. Last weekend, as the road to the referendum was reaching its crescendo, I had other things on my mind. I had the privilege of being at the Invictus Games. The Invictus Games were the brainchild of Prince Harry, who decided that injured servicemen could be helped to recovery through sport and through competition in sport. Invictus means unconquerable. And the women and men in front of me reminded me that the human spirit is just that, unconquerable. But the reason I refer to the games is because of an iconic image that will stay with me for the rest of my life. Three injured servicemen, one of whom just happened to be my own son, raced the race of their lives as you do in team pursuit cycling, you feed off each other's slipstream, and you open up a gap on the other riders, 
And these three injured servicemen did this to perfection. And then 40 minutes into the race, with gold, silver, and bronze assured, the bell rang. And all they had to do was race for the line to establish who would be first, and who would be second, and who would be third. But they decided to be countercultural and counterintuitive. Instead, as the commentator prepared the commentary that would take them to the finish, they formed a line. They joined hands and crossed the tape together. These were naturally competitive young men, but they knew that there was something more important than winning. So, in the spirit of these games, they decided that there should be no winners and no losers. And in the spirit of these games, the organizers made them all winners and awarded them three gold medals. That would not happen in any other competitive Ordinarily, no one remembers those who come second. But that must not happen in the context of what has been the most important, most intense, and most significant race that any of us has seen in our time and in our country. Somehow, we have to line up now, hold hands, cross the line together, and build the future for one another. Amen.
Let us pray. We pray for our land, our nation, our people. May we live together in a society at ease with itself, whose hallmarks are justice and fairness, where the stranger is welcomed, the poor provided for, the lonely befriended, the sick cared for with compassion and dignity. Raise up, O oh Lord, at every level of society, leaders endowed with wisdom and humility, that our common life may reflect the value of Christ's kingdom of grace, truth, and love. Blessed is the people that know the joyful song. They shall walk, O Lord, with the light of thy countenance. In my name shall they rejoice all the day, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. As we look back, on the history of our nation. Help us, Lord, also to look forward, not as in the words of Robert Burns, forward though I can see, I guess and fear. Help us rather to face the future in faith and hope. Grant also that the children and young people of our land may have a good inheritance and in their turn build on the legacy of past generations for the benefit of all the people. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy words to another, and shall We rejoice, O oh Lord, that you call us not to existence, but to life, and we give thanks for everything that makes that life beautiful. Art, literature, music, and culture of every kind. Truly we live not by bread alone. Help us as a people ever to value such riches, and in our pursuit of things material, never to neglect the life of the Spirit. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud voice and rejoice and sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with the harp, with the Living God, whose Son Jesus Christ shared our life as an expression of your love for the world, help us to look beyond these shores to the world beyond in all its variety and all its need. Bless the nations, bring peace where there is war, and help us to play our part in overcoming all that diminishes and impoverishes so many lives around the globe. Let the people praise the old God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield a great praise, and God, even our own God, shall bless us.
have been joined today by members of all of the political parties in Scotland who have agreed to unite together and show that union in common purpose by lighting a single candle from separate tapers. And I would invite uh, the representatives of the parties to join me here and ask the congregation please to stand. We commit ourselves to work for the people of Scotland, uniting to build a better society grounded in the values and ideals we share. Let us act wisely, respecting our differences, healing one another's pain, working together for the common good. Let us act justly towards those who have held different views towards those who cannot stand up for themselves, towards those who live life on the margins. Let us act with compassion when we see others struggling, when our neighbour needs support, when our rivals are in despair. Let us act with integrity, putting the good of others before our own, putting honesty and truth before personal advantage, putting self-interest aside in favour of self-sacrifice and noble sins. And I invite you now to turn to your neighbour and to shake their hand or embrace them in an act of commitment and unity to one another. John. we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
to the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth, and all humankind, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting. And may the grace of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go with each one of you and remain with each one of you this day tomorrow and forevermore.